I'm behind the wheel of a 2019 Bugatti Chiron Sport. The Bugatti Chiron, of course, is named after Louis Chiron, the great uh, racing driver from Monaco who was a key member of the Bugatti team racers in the 1920s. And the fact that his name was chosen for this model means a great deal to the Bugatti faithful. And as dramatic as the Bugatti Veyron in all of its variations happens to be, the Chiron takes it up to another level. It is the uh, prototypical sort of Spinal Tap 11. And the character of this car is quite different than that of the Veyron. The Veyron has prodigious performance, amazing uh, specs, and it takes it in a way that makes it all very smooth and, and, and very sort of quiet. It's, it's the sort of stealth manner of delivering performance. This Chiron Sport feels a lot more active. It's a louder, deeper note. And it makes you want to immediately try for that great 400 kilometers an hour record that the Chiron Sport and Super Sport have set. But even in this car, which is capable of a theoretical top speed of only 286 miles per hour, a great deal of fun can be had. The basic architecture, of course, of the Chiron is that of the Veyron, so the interior feels much the same. And in this particular special example, with these open tops, you once again have a great feeling of space in a, in a fairly uh, small cabin but you never feel claustrophobic. The fittings are as luxurious as you might expect. The finishes very, very, very highly detailed. Those familiar ridges are on the back of the shift paddles. And now you have these wonderful design elements uh, of the dorsal fin and the roof fin, which is inspired by the great Bugatti Aerolite Coupe, designed by Jean Bugatti in the 1930s. That central spine on the Aerolite was there for strength. The car built out of a special alloy of magnesium called Electron. And the design used in the later Bugatti Atlantique Coupes, traditionally built, this is an homage to those great Bugattis. And the question is, does it have the same kind of presence and character? Well, presence certainly this car has in spades, that's for sure. And the character, as I mentioned before, is something which is very, very sporty. This particular model is a special order in historic Bugatti colors. That wonderful French blue and the distinctive yellow. This, of course, being only the 1500 horsepower uh, version of the Chiron. The Sport, the Super Sport, of course, has 1,600 uh, horsepower and uh, is the car that set the record. I think that uh, having 1,600 horsepower on tap is useful. 1,500 is certainly pleasant. As if the, uh, the 1,200 of the standard Veyron was not enough. But it's not always about the horsepower. It is about the complete package. And Although the horsepower numbers are important for the uh, manufacturer and sort of barroom bragging rights, it's the idea that a car is capable of handling this kind of power on the road safely and efficiently is, I think, the point they wanted to make here. The race for extreme horsepower is not dissimilar to the great cylinder wars of the 1930s, where manufacturers sought to produce the best V12s and, and V16 engines, just to prove that they could. But as everyone knows, and the famous uh, old Pirelli tire slogan uh, stated quite uh, succinctly, power without control is nothing. So it's great to build 
massive horsepower into your cars. If you don't have the chassis and the tires and the engineering to support it, it's not very useful. And of course, most people will not be driving their Bugatti Chiron Sports at anywhere near the 1500 horsepower limit. So you'd better have a car that delivers this power in an even and satisfying way throughout. It is both a tribute to the Bugatti engineers and to the incredible flexibility of this platform, this engine, this chassis, that they could produce this car with such a different character than the original Veyron with the same basic materials. Whether you are a Chiron man or a Veyron man or woman for that matter depends entirely on the experience that you want to have in driving the car. This car is clearly from the seats to the steering wheel to the sound aimed at somebody who wants to know that performance is what this is all about and performance that you know it's there rather than performance that lay underneath the surface. Now, again, for my particular tastes, I think the Veyron would be the car that I would choose because the Veyron delivers what it has in a quiet way. It can punch, but it doesn't have to all the time. It doesn't have to protest that it's doing it. This is certainly fun, but I prefer a bit more subtlety. Somehow I think it's, it's, it's more French. Perhaps this is the more German side. After all, Bugatti did live in Alsace and it's a natural place where the French meets the German. And I think it does very, very, very distinctly in this car. So which animal was the subject of the Rembrandt Bugatti sculpture that became a legendary hood ornament? Was it the ocelot, the tiger, the giraffe, or the elephant? The answer is the elephant, one of which adorned the radiator of one of the great Type 41 Bugatti Royales. Thanks for watching our videos. If you like these videos, let your friends know. Subscribe, comment, share.